Welcome back to Blank Canvas. Uh, in the first session we did, I sculpted the little figure out of the, used the eight heads and a volume drawing. We fleshed her out and now we're going to position her on the base that I found and uh, we're gonna put a skin around her with the fabric. So I had her on this base, I taped her up, I hammered her up a little bit to shape her, to make the shapes very tight. The tin foil has to be really tight, you can't have that loose. So everything has to be as tight as possible and it takes a little hammering, so we did that in a break. And now we're back to position her on the base. And I had planned to do this because this is a lot of weight on this side of the base. But then when I thought about it, I thought, wait a minute, if I would be sitting on this piece of wood, I'm sure I would be sitting, and that's when I changed my mind, I would be sitting like this. This is what I would be doing. I could put my leg over here, I could rest. See, that's what you have to do. When you do a sculpture, you gotta think about what would you be doing and what looks the most interesting too. You can hold your back straight or you can twist it. See, your spine turns and how much more interesting is it if I move this around this way, put my hand onto my leg. Do you see what a difference that makes if I move this figure around a little bit? And see, and now, oops, and now I think I might even put my hands over here. Hanging on, oh no, look at that. See, that's way more interesting. This is what I think I would do if I sat on this base. There, so I changed my mind, that's how she's gonna sit. Now we're gonna get the fabric out, and so this is a normal, my son's t-shirt. I think it does, I don't think he meant for me to cut it up, but there it is. Take your husband's favorite t-shirt and make a sculpture out of it. And it has to be 100% cotton, because if there's polyester in there, it's not gonna work very well. First thing you do, you cut all the seams. So this is a seam. If you're lucky, you find a t-shirt that has no seams, but this one has two seams. So all the stitching needs to be cut off. So I can't cut very straight. So my trick is to hold your t-shirt like this, fold it in half, and now you only need to cut this little distance to get your strips, because you need to make for this size sculpture, so it's about a foot sculpture, a little bit over a foot sculpture, I think. Uh, maybe foot and a half. You need about five strips of t-shirt all the way around. So these are the strips I have pre-cut, so I didn't have to cut up his t-shirt in case he really still wanted it. So I cut these t-shirts in strips, cutting them this way. Now, every t-shirt is different. If you notice, if I hold this up, I cut about, what is this, an inch and a half. Um, when I usually say an inch, I get an inch like this or an inch like this, so they all consider this an inch. <laughs> this is an inch and a half, and you d it depends on your t-shirt. This t-shirt, there's many different knits. If you stretch it, this doesn't stretch much, but it, this one curls, do you see that? So when I start wrapping with it, I'll make sure the curl goes inwards, not outwards. Do you see that? Makes an ugly edge. This makes a pretty edge. So keep that in mind. When you stretch it, that you have a t-shirt that curls. If it doesn't curl, then it's okay. Some of them don't curl, some of them do. Some t-shirts, when you stretch them, you end up with a tiny little rope, and the other one ends up this size. So you wanna do one test strip first. I mean, this one, it's an inch and a half to do most of the most of the cuts. So here's my medium, Garden Spirits Medium. It's a bucket that comes in several sizes. This is a five and a half liter one. I have little ones like a liter or half a liter one, but for me this is easy to have the whole bucket. I put mostly all five strips in there, maybe four. No, five, I'm gonna put all five in there. And then I'm gonna take them out, and you want to massage your medium into the fiber. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'll leave this here. I'll move this out of the way, because now I'm gonna get messy. Take your fancy jewelry off. Not that this is fancy, but you don't wanna have your, um, your uh, glue all over your jewelry. It'll chip off, it won't stick. It only sticks to porous surfaces, and it's enormously strong. I have a big down dinosaur built outside, 
If you work larger, you need to not use copper, but you use steel, which I weld. And so the larger you go, the stronger your armature needs to be. But for these little ones, you can use copper. And as soon as you go bigger, you increase your, uh, your metal or wood or PVC pipe. I don't know, I've never, I can weld, so I use, I use weld um, steel. So my dinosaur is built out of steel and I've made larger than life figures uh, out of it as well that are living in Edmonton in a tree. I did tree huggers, so they're kids in a tree, climbing the tree, and they're welded as well, and they're living in a tree in Edmonton. So if you go to White Avenue and go behind there, there's a tree with two kids climbing, climbing in there. It's made with this. So mine stay out summer and winter, the big ones. The small ones, I bring them in. Do you see how I have to massage this in there? So I get the whole bundle done ahead of time. Then I, all I have to do is just wrap. So I start with one strip. I need my glasses again. Now watch me put all the glue all over it. There. I need a skinny one for the hand. There we go. This is a skinny one. So I always have one skinny one. So I'll show you how we start with the hand because the hand is not built out of tin foil. This is a net, this is a true inch. So this is a smaller one. And I'll start with on the wrist. And now the wrapping has to be done curl inwards, if you notice that, very tight, very tight. Now initially you think like, oh my gosh, all this gooey stuff. If you think you can build a sculpture out of clay and try this, you'll know and you appreciate how cool this medium is because you can <laughs> build anything with this. So when I get at the end of the wrist, I'll make a loop right there, that's my loop. That's going to be my hand, there it is, it's just a loop. It's going to be like a mitt, like this. It has a sum later on and it has the, the, the glove. So I'm just going to make a loop at this point and start wrapping it back up. And that'll be my hand. So just before you stick it down, you undo that uh, curl there and then you can stick it down. Make sure that loop is really tight onto the end of the hand. And now you start wrapping it all the way around. with this. And initially it's gonna drive you crazy, this long rope, you go, oh good lord, what am I supposed to do with this? Well, you just wrap it as nice as you can. And this thing should do a bronze sculpture in an afternoon. There's no way you could do that. But this you can, and it's so durable. So it's worth the effort to muck with it a little bit. So you make sure you overlap because this is where the body gets its strength. Once this is on there, it'll very slowly harden, but it gets an extreme hard finish, but it goes really slow. By tomorrow, you'll have its strength. So by the end of the afternoon, I can still bend it. By tomorrow, I cannot move it anymore. So. You want to do this very carefully, very as pretty as you can. There's not really one way of doing it. I always think nurses should be very good at this, doing a beautiful body wrap like this. But I've never been a nurse, and I don't know how good I wrap, but I'll do it as pretty as I can. And now I'm going to go across to the other arm, because this is the skinny one. And for the skinny one, I want to use that for the hands. So I'm going back to the hand on this side now. So with the wrapping as well, you always continue where you left off. So if, my, if I run out of uh, material now, I'll take my next one and I'll just continue where I left off because it doesn't stick to the tin foil. It does stick, however, to the last piece of fabric you put on there. So you keep wrapping where you left off. Now in this case, I can go around because it does wrap around the arm easier. You have to get a start. So make sure, oh this is a very skinny one, which will look lovely for the arm, but a bit of a tacky job to get it all nicely in there. And if you notice, I turn the figure rather than the rope. See that? 
Oops, I just have it free. don't have it sitting on the base and try to wrap it because that will be very tedious. But doing it like this makes it a little easier. So the entire body will be wrapped with the fabric like this. And it is still movable, so I'm not quite stuck with the pose as it is yet. So by the time it's all wrapped, I can still move it. And then I'll, um, I'll pose it properly on the base. And then by the time I drape it, uh, she ends up being glued down with the material onto the um, base. So the draping usually makes her attach to the base. So I'm not worried about it yet. I'll just keep wrapping her and giving her skin so she'll get her strength. And then I can, and a fairy doesn't get much clothing. I have a few other ones made there and I'll show you the different ways to drape uh, fabric on there because this is the coolest thing that got me sold on this um, uh, way of building a sculpture. It, um, it drapes, like try to make fabric with clay or with steel for that matter. If you want to use that beautiful draping, same thing with drawing, how hard it is to do fabric. I love doing it with the real fabric because it drapes just gorgeous and I'll show you that later on how lovely it is to use this material for draping and well that's the most impressive usually in a sculpture if there's any fabric in there. We go, how did they make that? Wow, that was easy with fabric. <laughs> I actually was at a church in Europe and I saw they used this for the, um, the story, the, you know, the 12 uh, images they have on the walls. They, uh, they did it with uh, this fabric hardener. They had clay images in there. So the faces, were made, the faces and hands were made with clay and the cross was made with wood and then all the draping was done with this. And was it ever stunning? I went up close and I thought, how did they do that draping? That was so amazing. And then I touched it. It was made with, imagine that. So I might just do that yet. That might be a project I'm gonna do one day. There, so the hands will come on later. Once I keep hitting the hands nonstop while I'm building. And here we go, this is a little flap. And when I twist the one side into a thumb, I just, it's not a great hand, but there's not much detail of facial features or anything on the sculpture anyways. But here's her hand. So now you check, make sure that your thumb is in the right place. Thumb comes up. So don't have the thumb like this because it'll look funny there. So now you, this is your thumb and then she could be holding something in her hand or holding something up. Do you see how you can move that hand? So that'll be the hand, but no worries about it because I'll keep hitting it the whole time. The next thing you want to see is how I do a face because these things are kind of interesting. If you do a face, I'll quickly draw that out again, that you have the positioning right. Ache in the middle is where the eyes are and there are five eyes across. Not that I'm going to put all of this in there, but you need another positioning for eyeballs in there. From here to here, in the middle, is the nose, the tip of your nose. Inside of your eye, straight down, is the width of your nose. Uh, from the nose to the chin, in the middle, is the bottom lip. Your eye is right straight down, there is the width of your mouth, there, and you make a wiggly line. It's the bottom lip, top, top. Your nose goes from the eyebrow, there. This is what we want to know. Now your ears are right from the, the eyebrow to the bottom of the nose and your hair goes halfway and there is your hair, your person. This is where the hair starts. So you, and on the sculptures I put lots of hair on them so you'll see that later. But these are the proportions of your face. So if I look straight at the head and I'm looking at it now from this side so you can see it. In the middle is where the eyes are. Now in the middle of that, this is where the nose is. And any time I stick that nose in there, people go like, are you sure that's where it goes? Well, if you see it right there, it looks really low in the face, but the, all I want is a silhouette. So if that is where the nose is. If you have it done, 
Then, then um, it should be there, not there, because that looks funny. <laughs> so then you, when you do your fabric over it, you'll stretch it, and after the um, show, after this uh, session, I'll have her completely wrapped, and then I'll show you. Now I can show you how the face will work. I will use a different piece for that, but if you see now the silhouette, if you stretch the fabric over it, I will use a bigger piece of fabric for that. And now you can see how that nose shows up just as a silhouette in the right place. So this is all you're going to get from the... Where did I push the nose? No, no, the nose is still there. There we go. There. Do you see that all you're going to get is a nose on the side? So here we go. On her shoulder, we'll just keep continuing the wrapping until she's completely skinned out and then in the next session we'll be draping her and dressing her up and positioning her on her base. Okay, let's see. And again, you do this as pretty as you can. And there we go. Oh. And over this shoulder. So do you see I keep hitting the hands every time, so no worries about that. It takes quite a while for it to harden. It very slowly hardens while you're working on it, so no concern about um, making a few changes while you're wrapping it. Yeah, so the only thing that I change is the shape of the face, um, the, the fabric. I don't do a strip in that. I use a bigger piece for the face, which I now didn't have laying around here, and I'll show you that in the next session when we start. I'll start with the face, and then we'll do the draping and the hair. The hair still gets done. So the fun part is yet to come. So this is a tedious job to get her kind of all skinned out. And when we get to the part here. So in case I don't dress her all the way, sometimes I drape them completely and you won't even see any of this. But in her case, she just gets a few wings and a little skirt on, most likely. Um, you won't see much of the wrapping. In this case, you will see her. She will show quite a bit of her wrapping, so I'd like to do it as nicely as I possibly can. So in case, because you can't tell where the dress starts or where the, where the skin starts, because it's all the same. So I go a few more times around, and then for the cheeks, I go several times in between here to make this look really pretty. There we go. So now in behind, I'm going to make it look like cheeks. Go here. Oh, get undone. Where is it now? There we go. And then, so this is for this side of the lake. Now I go down this side of the lake here. I've never wrapped it this fast. <laughs> all right. That's about being prepared. I had all this already cut. That makes a big difference. So if you have all your strips already cut, it goes a little faster than dipping them each time in between. All oh, this is, was already ready for me. Okay, go around the cheeks. Do you see I just continued where I just left off? So it sticks very nicely to the um, oops, oops, there, to the other fabric. That makes it a nice seal, but I will have to wrap this a few times here in order to cover that properly. Oh, there. 
So the skirt is gonna go over top of this, so there's no problem in going straight across with this. We won't be seeing this anyway, so there we go. And there. Notice I get it undone, this little, the little curl, just before I stick it down. I don't unravel the whole thing because that would be useless. It'll curl right back. So just before I stick it down, I just open it up and put that down. There we go. Now I love to do these figures in clay, I love clay. The problem with clay is there's this weight problem. As soon as I build something, the weight won't stand up or it caves in because, you know, the legs are too skinny. I can't make them stand up. I can't make them do so many things because the clay has a lot of weight. So this is what got me into this, got me so excited about this material. I could make any pose I want because it's light as a feather. It's only tin foil and a t-shirt, so there's no weight to it. All the weight you put to it is in the base, so lovely to use heavy rocks from outside. And um, big bases like this, so the weight of the wood is not very heavy, but this bottom part is quite heavy, so that, that's where the weight comes in. So if you wanted to hang some sculptures from the ceiling, which is possible, there's no weight to that. My friend did some, um, circus act people, right from her ceiling. Pinned them in there and they were so light, they just did the acrobats right from the ceiling. So I'll finish this up uh, in the break, I'll do the other leg, and then when we get back in the next session, I'll show you how to dress her up, install her, give her hair, and do the head, because that's a little bit different and use a different kind of method to cover the head. I don't want to have all these strips looking like a mummy. If you want to see more about sculpting or painting, we have classes here at the Red Roof Studio. We have in Brooks, we have a uh, art club, the uh, Newell Sage Art Club, and there is a pottery guild. So there you can do pottery. Here we do the sculpting and uh, uh, painting. We have Thursday. Thank you for watching um, Blank Canvas, and we'll see you in the next session.